Hey friends, super sorry to hear that you've been having stressful situations with your tension assemblies, but I've got some great solutions that I think will help all of us get a little bit more on top of what's going on with our tension. So stick with me for some tips to tension troubleshooting. Oh, that's a mouthful. Let's get started. That's right, everybody. My name is Rob Appel. Thank you for joining me right here on the Stitch in Heaven YouTube network. This show is called Sew Well with Rob Appel, where we're going to talk a lot about sewing and wellness. And today we're going to talk about one and the same, wellness of our sewing machines, right? So a lot of us have situations that are very stressful and it relates to our tension assembly on the machine. So I've decided I'm going to break down a couple of different videos for all of you and help us all understand our tension so much better. So this video is going to focus on the machine and is it working properly. I'll do a whole other video on balancing your tensions with your threads, some of the weights and some of the ways in and around some of the other troubleshooting when it comes directly to thread. But today is all about the sewing machines. So you can see I've got a bunch of different machines out. I've got a couple more down here on the floor that we'll pull out for demonstrational purposes. Um, it doesn't matter the model that you are on. What we're going to talk about today is general practices, general things that go on with tension, specifically in relationship to the machine, the upper tension, and the presser foot lifter lever. This tool right here, the part that actually makes the foot go up and down, it is one of the number one features of the machine, almost all machines out there, that actually opens and closes our tension assembly. So right now I have my Foff embroidery machine on the table because this is one of the machines that doesn't quite qualify because it doesn't have a lifter lever on it anywhere. This is all digital now, so it has push buttons. So let me demonstrate. So that is going to lift and lower the presser foot. Now this machine has also a motor that controls the opening and closing of the tension system. So a machine that has been bought in the last few years, a machine that doesn't have a physical lifter lever on it, a machine that's designed for embroidery may not fall into what I'm about to say. It doesn't mean that the information isn't the same. It just means that it may not have the lifter lever to work with. So on a machine like this, what we're really going to find out is, is my tension system working? When I pull on my thread, that is my upper needle thread, is the actual system working? So on this one, the only way to check is to put the foot all the way down, all the way up, and feel, is there a difference on the thread? Can I physically feel, is there a squeeze on the discs? But I probably have jumped ahead way too fast for all of you. Look at this. Look at this real close right here. This is what I need you to be able to see and understand first before anything else. This is an external tension system. This is the easiest way for me to explain it. They started way back when on the featherweights, probably even before that. But what you're looking at here is a series of two metal discs inside this plastic housing. Those are the actual tension discs. And you can see as I lift my presser foot, as I lift it up, you can see those discs open nice and wide. And as I drop that presser foot down, flat on the bed, it is now closed. So this actually is one that you can see the physical workings of the presser foot lifter with the tension system. So number one, are your discs physically functioning? When you lift your foot, are the discs opening and closing? And there's a couple of things, let's just stop and talk about the troubleshooting that can cause that not to be operational. One is your sewing machine hasn't been serviced in quite a while and the presser foot itself is sticking. So it may not be going all the way up or all the way down and that can cause that tension discs to not close all the way. But the more common practice is we're sewing and sewing causes fuzz, sewing causes lint. If you saw my uh, five simple hacks to keeping your sewing machine running better, a lot of it was getting the lint out of our feeding system. Well, it's very easy to get lint trapped in here in your tension discs as well. So you could imagine if those tension discs can't close properly, if there is a ball of lint that is bigger than the thread in that space, now you're gonna have tension issues from the upper thread. So let's break this down a little bit. 
The tension issues I'm talking about right now are the big loops on the bottom of the project. So again, there's so many things to talk about when it comes to tension, I probably jumped ahead. But one of the other things I can really teach all of us, regardless of what kind of sewing machine it is, is generally speaking, if you have a problem on the bottom of your project, it's from your upper thread. And if you have a problem on the top of the project, it's from your lower or your bobbin thread. And one of the ways I do that, and especially when I'm troubleshooting a machine, is I use the same weight threads. I remember weights for another video, but I'll use different colors. So in this particular machine right now, I have a red thread for the needle and I have a white thread in the bobbin. So you can see as I was stitching along here with this red thread, what I did is I actually took the thread out of the tension discs. So you could see on the backside, all of these crazy big loops that started to form. And I, I was able to sew just a little further with the tension back on until the thread actually still jammed up and broke. So a lot of times you're going to get, I'm going to say, 12, 15 stitches worth of big loops that will be a big mess on the back of your project. Now I have a couple of other samples that I brought out because I've got lots of messy samples, right? A project like this, a sample like this, a sample like this where you see a bit of thread but you can see the thread tail, this is different. This is from when I started with my free motion machine quilting, but I didn't bring my threads to the top. I didn't secure my threads like you can see on a sample like this. And this is what you're looking for and this is why we talk about bringing our threads to the top when free motion. And I think that's going to be a whole different video altogether. So we're not talking about these big chunks of thread that we can account for. We're not talking about when we know what's happening. We're talking right now about what happens when we get these big giant loops on the back side of the project. So remember, this red thread is on the back of the project, but it came from the top. And it came from the top because when I went to thread this machine, the thread did not get into the tension assembly. The easiest way for that to happen is you're changing thread colors, especially if you're doing free motion machine quilting. A lot of times you'll leave the foot down to hold your quilt in place because the needle has to come up to change the thread colors. When that foot is down, those tension discs are closed. Therefore, even if you thread the machine properly, the thread is sitting on the top of the tension discs. So you'll often start sewing along and whammo, you've got all of this noise, all of this problem, and the machine has been working fine just before you change colors. A lot of times you'll get frustrated. You'll lift that presser foot lift left or <laughs> I'd be frustrated too if that's what I was calling the darn thing. You lift up this presser foot left liver left. <laughs> I can't get it right now. The presser foot gizmo. You lift that up and you pull out that project because you're so frustrated. And what actually happened is you now also pulled that thread right back into your tension discs and it is seated in here nice and secure. So that's one of the troubleshooting things that can really happen. But the first thing you need to know is is the tension discs working? Not what number it's on, that we are gonna now talk about. And on this particular tension assembly, when I close it, I wanna be looking straight down. I wanna be looking straight on top of my tension system. And when I do that, I'm reading the way that this interior knob is going to place on those outer numbers. So this one's set up as a three right now. And if I turn it clockwise, it's going to go to a higher number. The higher the number, the more squeeze or the more tension on the upper thread. So if this was a tug of war, we're making this team stronger. So we should be pulling with a higher number. We should be pulling more of the lower thread, the bobbin thread to the top if we're balancing thread. But right now we're just concerned, is it working? So I'm gonna lift my presser foot lever up. I'm gonna have my machine completely threaded. And the test is, I'm just gonna pull on my thread and as I drop that presser foot lifter, oh, I even broke the thread in the eye of the needle as I started to pull on it. I wanna see that needle actually wiggle. Sometimes I'll yell, fish on! It's a great way to remember. But yeah, as we lower that presser foot, I wanna see absolute tension on my disc. And now I remember why I broke the thread because I had turned my thing clockwise up to about a six. So counterclockwise will actually turn that dial but you need to have the foot down in order to read it. So my machine was normally set at a three. And before you mess around with your tension at all, you always wanna have a good starting place. You wanna know where your tension was set originally on your machine. 
So, so far, all we've really learned is that when you lift your presser foot lever up, it opens those tension discs. And I need you to always lift that foot up to thread and unthread the machine. So on this machine here, this is the Foff machine. This is one of the machines I'm very comfortable working on and it's an older machine that does have a lifter lever on it. So this is gonna open and close the tension discs. But like so many machines, this particular machine has everything hidden on the inside. So this is not a machine that you could really service if you were to get something caught or stuck yourselves. And a lot of sewing machines are this way. So I'm gonna take off this side cover real quick because I know how to. And I'm also gonna take off this top so you can actually see more of what's going on on the inside of the sewing machine itself. So if you look right here, you can see there's actually the pin that is connected to the presser foot lifter that actually opens and closes these tension discs that are right in here in the machine. This is connected to the dial, just like you saw the other dial. A lot of times your dial is gonna have zero to nine. Actually, most times the dial is gonna be zero to nine. I don't know why they don't go to 11. That would be even better, right? The bigger the number, the bigger the effect. So with your tension, remember that. The bigger the number, the more the squeeze. So your standard tension for sewing is generally four and a half, not because that's a magic number, but that's the middle of your tension range. We want you to be able to loosen and or tighten the tension by turning the dial. So the lower the number will loosen the tension on the th upper thread and the higher the number will tighten the tension on the upper thread. So whenever you're playing or adjusting or looking at any of these situations, you wanna make sure you have the foot down so you're getting an accurate reading on that actual dial and you wanna make sure that you can go ahead and pull the threads through. Maybe you can see the situation here too. This disc is now closed, this foot is now down, and if I were to try to thread this machine, as I were to lay this across here, that thread does not fall in there. It literally just sits on the top of those tension discs, and it won't get in the place we need it until we have those frustrating moments. Okay, so first of all, make sure that when you lift your foot up, there is an opening, there is a space in there. And if you'd like to go ahead and clean out your tension discs, whether they're sealed in a machine like this particular one, or they're open like this particular one, one of the best things you can do is use a thicker piece of thread, a pearl cotton, um, something that's a little bit heavier weight, even a 12 weight thread, and you can just floss it through or run it through your machine like you're really threading it. I don't want you to get too wild with a pipe cleaner unless you can see what's going on because there's another part of this tension system we want to talk about still. That is called the check spring. That's this little spring right here. It's also the little spring on the front end of this. That check spring is what is taking up the slack behind the, the take up lever on your actual machine. So as your needle goes up and down, there's gonna be slack and loops in that thread. So that little check spring is keeping the slack after the tension and out of the needle, basically. So the machines that have the tension system sealed, it's very easy for you to damage that check spring by trying to clean it out with a pipe cleaner, or if you ever get thread broken in your machine and you start tugging and pulling on it. If you ever get thread lodged in your machine, best thing to do is lift the presser foot, take the needle out, of course, and start to turn the hand wheel forwards and backwards as you take and try to wiggle that thread out by hand or maybe you have tweezers on it. Try to get as much of the thread out as possible because if it gets caught in the machine, as I was saying earlier, think about what happens when you get dust or balls of thread that are caught in these tension discs. If they get caught in there, they're gonna be thicker than the thread you're trying to use. So even if you lower your foot and you have a squeeze, you won't have the appropriate amount of squeeze on your thread. Now let's talk about that, right? As we have the thread running through the tension discs and I do lower that foot, I want to be able to pull on it a bit. I don't want it to be so taut I can't pull at all. So I want my tension and uh, to be able to just slide and glide nice and easy through the upper machine. That doesn't mean I've balanced out my stitches yet, it just means that I have the opportunity to pull thread through when the foot's down, which means it's not too tight. One of the things, and I know I'm talking a lot about threads right now, but this really still has to do with the actual tension system. After the machine has been threaded properly, I always will lift the foot up 
and then I just run the thread for a few minutes. I'm pulling it through the machine, pulling it through the machine, and I'm feeling the thread to make sure that nothing is snagging, nothing is getting caught along the way. I have a nice smooth path while the presser foot is up, and then again, I lower it one more time, make sure I can feel that there is tension on that thread, and then I'm ready to start looking and evaluating what's going on within my bobbin system, right? So the other thing to understanding is your machine working properly is the bobbin tension working properly, correct? So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about some of our standard bobbin cases first, and then we'll talk about the drop in bobbin cases next because they're a whole different beast, literally. Now this bobbin case and this bobbin case probably look identical uh, to you, but they are considerably different. And the reason being is this machine is a high speed or straight stitch only machine. This is a great machine for free motion style quilting and piecing, but it does not do a zigzag at all. So the timing is a little bit different on it and the speed is much more uh, accelerated. And so I can do a lot more stitching per minute with it. And because of that, there's a check spring in the bobbin case itself. So as I push down, I can feel there's a little bit of a spring. As I were to open this up and look inside, you would be able to see that it's like the little uh, twist part that goes around your bag of bread. It's a little round uh, circle that actually is another tension disc inside the bobbin case. Unlike your standard bobbin case, there won't be anything on the inside, so your bobbin will just drop in. So let's talk about the standard bobbin case first, making sure there's tension on that. When I take my bobbin and I drop it into the bobbin case, the thread needs to kind of cross back over itself. Whereas I pull it back under, there's going to be a spring here, or a flat bar, a flat lever that is also adjustable. And on this bobbin case, as I pull it, I want to be able to see my bobbin as I'm looking at it is going clockwise. If the thread is not forming the zigzag on the way out of the case, it will have half of the amount of tension on the thread. So there will be less tension on the bottom thread, which means that bottom thread will most likely be being pulled to the top of the project, the top of the machine. You might see something that looks like this. You might start to see uh, spots and dots of tension. This is actually too many stitches in one space, but you'll see that same exaggerated um, account if you don't have enough tension in one location. This is different than no tension, right? No tension with your foot up are big, big loops. Little dots, little loops like this are either erratic tension, which is often caused by your thread or your needle, or having a little bit too loose attention and having too many stitches in one place. Again, happens a lot in free motion for us because we're in charge of all the stitch capacity. So back to this bobbin case. I want my tension nice and taut on this bobbin case. So technically I can actually pick the thread up off the table. If I give it the dangle test, I can feel the bobbin has dropped roughly an inch in the air, but it's not gonna keep on running. For example, if I take and do the same thing, I want my thread to go in, it's going to zig over that, zag under the bar, so as I pull on it crosswise. But watch this. This is the bobbin case that has the check spring within it. That check spring is going to be additional tension once it's loaded and locked into the machine. So right now this bobbin case has almost no tension whatsoever. I can often pick it up, but I can't even get it to come off the table, even if I pull on it fast, right? So that's the way we set our tension on a bobbin case that has a check spring. We want it to be considerably looser because once I take this and I lock it back into the machine, that pushing of the bobbin against that check spring has now caused additional tension. And I can feel that it is much more taut now than it was as it was laying out on the table, right? Let's talk about those drop-in bobbins. So let's take a look deeper into this drop-in bobbin case. In the last video on the five tips, we talked about how to clean and dust underneath, but now we're gonna talk about the specific tension. So as I go ahead and open up my trap door, a lot of times you can see on the trap door just what I was describing on the other bobbin cases, which is the diagram that shows the way the thread needs to kind of zig and zag throughout the system. That's causing, every time your thread is bending, it's causing additional tension on the thread. So we really wanna make sure that that's happening. Now, as we come in a little bit closer, I'll even use the tip of the scissors so you can see, right in here is where I need to make sure my thread gets pulled. So every now and again, I will experience where I'm not having good sewing quality, good sewing tension, and I'll just check real quick, and what has happened is I didn't snap my bobbin thread deep into the uh, position as I was getting ready to re-thread it. 
So one of the things I like to do is have a little bit longer thread tail. So I've got a couple of extra inches. And when I drop my bobbin in, instead of just trying to pull it through, I actually will put my finger, my opposite finger on that bobbin and I'll, can you hear that click? Did you hear that snap in there? I can physically feel it snap in there. And now as I pull on it, I can feel there's tension. A lot of these machines will actually have a couple more gizmos, a thread cutter kind of device, so that we can then cut the threads and everything's ready to rock and roll. But let's look a little bit deeper inside of this because there's one more thing I want to point out if I haven't already before. Probably not to do this with your good scissor tip, uh, number one. <laughs> okay, so with a drop-in bobbin like this, there is going to be a little bit of a set screw right here that you can see. There's a little small screw here and you could technically make an adjustment, but we really, 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 really don't want you to. You should purchase an additional bobbin case if you want to try to make adjustments to these. And the major reason is, is they're very hard to get set back to standard. Some of us want to use a lot heavier threads for decorative embellishment in our bobbins, and that would be a reason why you might want to purchase an additional bobbin case that's set much looser for your embellishment threads. I will tell you my big trick right now, and I know this was supposed to be about is your machine working, and I'm talking a lot about balancing the tensions on the threads themselves. I just use a finer or heavier weight thread to adjust my tension in my drop-in bobbin case. It's so much easier than actually adjusting the bobbin case itself. A lot of times the springs are not set to be adjusted real well on your standard bobbin case. Conversely, on your standard bobbin case, the ones we have like from our old machine, there's gonna be two screws, there's gonna be one that's closer to the thread hole, and that one that's closest to the thread hole, you can turn lefty-loosey, righty-tighty, and you can tighten and loosen very easily the bobbin tension on a standard bobbin case. Remember, it's not a bad idea to put in mark of nail polish or a Sharpie marker or something that will denote where it started when you began your tension um, exploration exercise, right? Where you were loosening or tightening your bobbin tension. Um, but really, if you want to have a machine that you can play a lot with tension adjustments for your bobbin case, I do suggest a bobbin system like this other than a drop-in bobbin. It is so much easier to adjust these tensions on these bobbin cases. And again, if you don't know what you're doing, please don't do it based on this video. Make sure you work with somebody that will teach you and physically help you understand how to get your bobbin tension set correctly. Because in the next video, I'm gonna teach you, we start by setting our bobbin tensions first before we start to balance out the rest of the machine to get our thread tensions looking pretty, not just running correctly. We're still on running correctly today. So running correctly has a lot to do if you're on a drop-in bobbin with getting your drop-in bobbin case back in the machine in the correct format. So you're gonna see there's a notch on almost all of these. Sometimes it'll be marked with white. Right now I wish it was so you could see it a little bit better, but there's this bump or this notch. This spring right here is part of your tension system. That spring needs to be up against this notch. So a lot of times you're gonna to have to wiggle this into position and you can see right now I've got it on the wrong side of the notch. I need that over here in the center of the machine or on the left hand side of the notch. I've never met uh, a machine where, the, excuse me, the notch wasn't on the left and the spring wasn't on the right. Sometimes that spring will be connected to the underside of your uh, stitch plate. Uh, so if you're not sure right where it goes, make sure everything is lined up properly. If you do not get this lined up properly, you'll probably get five, six, seven, eight stitches, and then things will start to go south and you'll have to clean things out. And you'll notice that your, things are not sitting or seated very nicely down in here. Take the time, open it all the way up, maybe follow that other video where I walk you through cleaning out your system here. Make sure everything is seated correctly before you put your stitch plate back on. So again, making sure that your interior or your drop and bobbin case is lined up proper with that little spring is paramount to making it stitch correctly. Then go ahead and get everything put back together right. And as I was showing before, as you drop in your drop in bobbin, <laughs> not drop it on the floor, as you drop in the machine, go ahead and hold it with your finger, slide that thread over that first groove or that first clamp, let it snap all the way into place, 
and then run it through your thread cutting devices, put your little door back on, and then you've gone ahead and secured your bobbin thread in your drop-in bobbin machine. So again, there's really two major things I want you to be focused on with this video for tension, and it has nothing really to do with the threads yet. It has to do with, is the machine functioning properly? Is your tension discs system, are they opening and closing with the lifting of your presser foot? Remember, when the foot goes up, those discs should go open. Once those discs are open, you're gonna go ahead and unthread and thread the machine to make sure that your thread is always deep in the tension discs so that they can get a nice squeeze. If you ever put that, ten that presser foot down and you don't feel a good squeeze on your thread, first just check to make sure the machine is threaded properly. Second, if it's not, start to turn that dial so that the number increases from that four and a half up to a seven, an eight, a nine, and see if you feel any additional tension on that thread as you're pulling on it by hand. If there's no additional tension, chances are you've got a big thread ball, a dust bunny that's in those tension discs, or there's something not allowing your presser foot to come all the way down, but you'll feel that. It'll feel very crusty and sticky within your hand. If it comes all the way down and you still have no tension on your thread, chances are you have a thread ball in the way. And in that case, again, turn the dial all the way to zero, lift that presser foot all the way up so those discs are open and floss it with a nice thick cotton thread, something that will help get that out. I really discourage the spray air. I really discourage trying to use a vacuum or a toothpick or a pipe cleaner unless you can see everything within your tension discs. If you can't see everything within your tension discs, chances are you're just gonna make matters worse but at least you now know what the situation is and you won't spend all of your sewing day trying to repair a tension system that probably needs to go in and have a real tech look at it for you. So that's what I wanted to do today was break down tension a little bit. Is your machine working properly? Is that presser foot lifter working with those tension discs? Is your thread properly set up in your bobbin case? Is it going the proper direction? Is the thread all the way through that one little tension area on your bobbin case? And if those things are happening and you still have no control over your thread tension, chances are it's time for a service or time to watch my other video, which I better get busy and start making for all of us on balancing our tension. So that's coming up real quick. Again, if you love today's video, please make sure you're subscribed. You'll get to see a bunch of wonderful content from all of us at Stitch in Heaven. I appreciate you being here. I hope this has increased some of your sewing wellness, reduced some of the stress around that tension assembly, and I will see you all next time in the next video. Thanks again. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. It really helps support our channel. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. Hit the little button to be notified every time we go live or do a new video for all of you. And here's one from the past I think you'll really enjoy.